Hi, Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents. Now, just got through eating raisins. Okay, I'm going to share a story with you. This is a personal experience that happened to me. It could have been extremely scary. I could have been panic stricken. But I want you to hear this because I want to make a point. And I hope you really hear with your heart. All right. I was in the hospital. I'm making it real quick. They diagnosed me with congestive heart failure, with pneumonia, double pneumonia, AFib, the whole nine yards. Okay. I was in ICU, intensive care, for 12 days. Now, here is the part. On my, I went back to the hospital about four times when I had this procedure. I actually went five times, but what did I go, it doesn't matter, anyway four or five times on one of those trips. Here I am in the hospital getting ready to have a totally different procedure than the ones I had before. But with this procedure, they had to put me under. It wasn't surgery, it was just a procedure. They had to put me under. So now they're trying to figure out why does the fluid keep getting backed up in my lungs? Every time they drain my lungs, boom, I'm back in the hospital. The fluid's back. They're trying to figure out what is going on. So anyway, to be honest, one of the doctors finally confessed they really didn't think I was going to make it. They weren't sure. Okay, but what happened was here I am going for this procedure, and I'm out, out like a light. And they are literally cutting a hole, just a little peephole, in my skin. And they work this tube and it goes down into my chest cavity because now they're trying to figure out another way to suck out the fluid so I don't die. Anyway, I come to, I'm laying in the bed and I'm looking, I see a clock in front of me. The room doesn't look familiar, so I assume I am in recovery. You know, the uh, the recovery room. And I'm laying there. I don't feel cold. That's the weird part. I also don't feel uncomfortable. I am quite comfortable. But there's a catch. I can't move. I am totally paralyzed. Can't move my head. I can't speak. I can't move my fingers, my hands, my legs, my feet, my toes. I cannot move. So now I'm thinking my thoughts to God. Okay, God. I think what I need to do is go back to sleep because this must be a side effect of anesthesia. I'm not out yet. I'm not all the way out of anesthesia. So I'll just go back to sleep. But while I'm trying to go back to sleep, I notice, what's that? Crotton's in my mouth. I can move my tongue. That was the only thing I could move. And I feel this tube. And then I run my mouth, my tongue, I realize the tube is going down in me. So I'm laying there. Then I realize something else. Here's another surprise. I'm not breathing. Weird. It, it was so weird to realize I was not breathing. Through my muscular control, I was not inhaling, I was not exhaling on my own. A machine was doing it for me. Something over there somewhere was breathing in and out for me. The weird part was it didn't feel weird, it felt very comfortable. 
it was the right amount of air coming in, the right amount of air going out, the right amount of, of, of uh, the right pace. I, it was, here's the trip. You want to hear the miracle of it all? I, Miss Emotional Me, I did not panic when I was paralyzed. And I didn't panic when I realized I was not doing the breathing on my own. I was at total peace. I just closed my eyes and went back to sleep. Next thing I know, they're pushing me in the other room, in my room, to, uh, to let me know that I had two visitors. Now, by then, when they woke me up for that, my friends are saying, hey, Pat, how you doing? And I'm like, hey, girl, how you doing? My eyes are swimming all over. I didn't have much control, but I was moving. I was talking. Hmm? <laughs> and I was breathing on my own. Now, I say all that to say this. The reason I could not move I'm making a point, so stay with me with this story. The reason I could not move, I found out later, was because when they put me under, they didn't put me under deep enough. When they put the tube down my throat, I ripped it out. They had to give me more anesthesia and induce a comatose state. I was in a coma. That's why I couldn't move my body. Right. That was for my own protection. Now, here, here are some points I'm going to make. When life seems to have you frozen, in a state that you can't seem to get yourself out of. You have no control over this madness. It all seems to have control over you, but you have none. You may need to just thank God for being there for you and go back to sleep. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. And he shall bring it to pass. Now. Here I was. At peace. God kept me in perfect peace. Because the whole time I was in ICU. I depended on God. No one else. But God. Every time I was in the hospital, I depended on God, for God to pick the staff, for God to guide the doctor's hand, the surgery, I mean, everything, I depended on God. Now, what I'm saying that to say is, there are times when it seems like life has you in a, in a, a comatose state, you're, per, you're paralyzed. You can't seem to function. The thing has you frozen in time. You're in a daze. You're out of it. You feel like you're not even coherent. But God will still keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stay on him. And when you can't do a thing Thing. When you can't come up with anything clever, you can't fix it. You can't work this thing out. The best thing to do, baby, is lean back and go back to sleep. Don't panic. Don't panic. You make, listen, when you panic, 
You can create misery. You can cause pain. You can make an ugly situation catastrophic. That's why they had to induce me into a coma. Because my natural instinct, which I, I don't even remember that, I'm telling you. My natural instinct was to pull the thing out. They had to have the tube in me. Why? Something had to breathe for my lungs. They had to inhale and exhale. They had to push air in and put... They had to breathe for my lungs. So in order for me to be able to breathe, the tube had to be in there. There are times when in order for you to go through what you're doing, in order for you to stay alive through this thing, things happen that you don't want. It feels like things in your life are infiltrating their, their, their um, oh goodness, invading your space you didn't ask for this thing to be in there but it's necessary you don't know it's necessary because God's ways are above our ways and his thoughts above our thoughts when you get to the point where you are able to rest in the Lord wait patiently for him Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. When you're able to wait on the Lord, you can actually be comfortable in a volatile situation. You can be comfortable amid chaos. You can be comfortable when you have no control over the whole situation. Because you know who does. Oh, I don't know if you heard that. I am trying. I, I, I tend to to deal with that analogies and, and paradox. I mean, the analogies. What's the other word? Uh, allegories and parable type things. That's the way I teach. But it it seems to paint a picture so you really can see. The, the impact and there are times when you're going through what you're going through through the whole thing you know I never had a sore throat from ripping that thing out why because during the time that they were telling me it happened the first thing I said was okay God don't let me feel any pain don't let it be sore heal it before it starts getting irritated I mean God kept pain away from me except when they pulled the needle out of my chest, put it in my chest, in my lungs. When they pulled the tube out from, I screamed at the top of my lungs. It was a necessary evil. And there are times when you go through stuff in your life, it hurts. But it is a necessary evil. All of this was to save my life. What is happening in yours that God is using to save your life, to save your sanity? Trust in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. He shall bring it to pass. He shall bring you forth as gold tried in the fire. Just wait on the Lord. Trust in him. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You're not alone in this thing. Emmanuel, God with.